get entered into the room. Welcome to the Work Lighter Challenge. I adjusted <laughs> too much. Welcome, welcome. Pop in the chat where you're joining us from. See you, Julie Claire. Welcome. <laughs> Lauren, there's Lori and Sunday. So uh, welcome to the Work Lighter Challenge. I'm Darla Ledoux and I'm here with Ashley Woods. We are co-holding this container today. So everybody say hi to Ashley. Good morning. Um, we will go about 30 minutes each morning for the next five days and our lessons build on each other. Today, we're setting a foundation. Hi, Margie from Cincinnati. I was, when I tell my story today, I was in Cincinnati when this happened. Um, Greenville, South Carolina, we have Portugal, Berlin, White Mountains of Arizona, Idaho Falls, Bonnie, okay. Kansas, Milwaukee, UK, Arizona, Calgary, Sussex, UK, Julie from New Mexico, we've got Boston. Amazing. All right, if you see anyone in your area, definitely connect. Whew, okay, so we are here to have a potent conversation over the next five days about how to work lighter. And one of the phrases we use is work lighter as a light worker. And I'm curious whether you consider yourself a light worker or not, um, this applies to you. Um, but go ahead and put light worker in the chat if that re word resonates for you. And I know at the beginning of my work, it really didn't. I didn't even know really what that meant. I just knew that I had a passion for helping people see things differently so that they could feel better moving through life. Now, I didn't have this from the beginning. It was acquired through various training and transformational experiences I had. When I first, um, when I first learned that I had the power to create my life, that the way I was viewing my life was affecting how I felt in my life and that therefore the results I created. It was like, I call it my punch in the stomach moment where I realized um, not only like, wow, what if I had known this sooner, but everybody needs to know this. Like, why are we not taught this? Why are we not taught this? And I'm imagining everybody here has their own punch in the gut moment, that, that time when you realized, oh my gosh, all of the way of being I've been holding so tightly to, I actually, it, it's not necessarily the truth. And that there could be another truth that if I embrace it, everything starts to change. And my guess is if you're here, that's the type of work you bring to your clients. And that's the commitment that you have in the world to help them transform whatever's in the way at the core so that they can achieve whatever it is that they're here for. Um, I call this a transformational leader. And I'm guessing if you're here, you resonate with that. So go ahead and type, we'll just do TL for short in the chat if you also resonate with that phrase. Thanks for this morning participation. Yeah, so we have a lot of people in the right place here. Beautiful. So one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, we had, we had the ruling in the United States last week that um, felt really heavy, right? Like when I opened my Facebook, for the most part, all of the posts felt very, very heavy or angry, upset, aggressive, right? Rightfully so and understandably. As a transformational leader, we know that what we are here for is ultimately making a difference in the types of agreements that we have as a society for how to live, 
right? The way we can honor one another, the way we can support one another, hold space for one another, allow people to be free to be themselves without the need to control it, right? Without that level of fear. And yet there are times where it can feel like a heavy burden or a responsibility. Has anybody felt that? Like, whoa, this is a lot. I, how am I ever gonna make this impact I'm here for? Or what is my right next step? Um, and I know I relate to that. I have definitely felt that way where it felt like life and death all the time was on my shoulders. And that can feel really, really heavy. And it's so interesting because the parts of us as transformational leaders that are drawn to this work, um, we know it doesn't have to be that way, right? We, we know actually that being heavy about our work is the opposite of bringing light to the world. And yet we can get hooked in to traditional ways of thinking and leading to following certain formulas or approaches that then make our work feel heavy. So because I have a lot of, I recognize a lot of familiar faces, but I know for sure there are quite a few of you who are new to me. Um, I'm gonna just share a little bit about who I am. And then we're gonna dive into this core concept of our week, which is the idea of owning your sourced magic. And I'm gonna talk about what that means. So I'm Darla Ledoux. I have been a transformational coach and retreat leader in my own business for 12, a little more than 12 years now. Um, I'm the author of two books. My first book is called Retreat and Grow Rich. It's about how to host powerful, profitable, transformational retreats. Um, and my most recent book is called Shift the Field. And Shift the Field is all about how to help your clients shift their energy before you teach them all of your brilliant uh, offerings, right? So that they're in a really receptive place. And we're gonna talk about receptivity today. Um, I, have, I have been a coach in various ways for more than 20 years, actually. I was trained as a coach in my corporate job. I went on to lead um, programs for um, landmark education before going off and starting my own business. So I've been in the coaching capacity for a long time and I am deeply passionate about the work of transformation and about spending time with people like you who are also committed to this work. Um, when we are connected and we know we're not alone and we're not crazy, we amplify our potency in the world. So that's really what I've dedicated myself and my business to at this stage. Um, but I started out as a career coach. I didn't like my job. I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. I couldn't find the courage to do it until I transformed a belief. And then all of a sudden it took off. And so I started as a career coach and I've evolved little by little to this place of gathering, gathering the light workers and the healers and the transformation workers. Ashley Woods is our lead coach on Team Sourced, and Ashley's going to share a little bit um, and hold a little bit of this training today. She does all of our um, strategy sessions with potential new clients and is holding our business curriculum. So we have kind of two curriculums here. One is a certification program, and the other is a business curriculum where we help people to design their business around their magic. I'm sure we'll talk more about that at some point. So with that, um, I want to hear a little bit about you. So when I think about working lighter, we are here to work lighter so that we can serve more people, right? If we're, ha if we're having those like nightmare dreams about, oh my God, did I say the right thing to this client or... Um, how can I show up on social media or whatever it is, then we're not available to spread the light. And so I want to explore this idea of the things that make our businesses heavy as transformational leaders for a minute. So I kind of bucket them in three areas. So the first is clients. 
if you've ever experienced it feeling heavy to actually convert someone into a paying client, um, go from like a prospect or a lead into someone who's paying you, and that feels heavy, write that down. If you've ever had an agreement with a client and you don't know exactly how to navigate getting them to their result, they're showing up in heavy energy and then you end up in heavy energy. And before you know it, you're dreading calls with that person or, you know, having, I, I remember waking up thinking about a client thinking, what, what is up with this person? <laughs> why, why are they hurting me? So, um, Write that down, right? So there's a couple different ways clients can actually feel heavy to where if you, um, if you are wanting to bring in more money for your business, but you have these clients that feel heavy and you're thinking, if I add more, it's gonna be even heavier. That's not gonna feel fun, right? That's not gonna feel fun. And so you're gonna resist and avoid. Um, the second piece is marketing. Marketing. So have you ever felt heavy about your marketing where either you felt like, oh my gosh, I have to do this certain marketing activity and I hate it, but everybody says I need to do it, but I hate it. Yeah. Or... Um, I really want to put some systems in place for my marketing so that it can feel light and easy, but that means I need some help. I need a support team. I don't know who to hire. Will they be the right person? Maybe I can learn to do it myself. It's probably easier just to do it myself. Yeah. Anybody have felt that? And then we've got the area of the business model. And we think about your business model and your money going together um, in terms of the pricing, right? Your business model includes your pricing. So your business model deciding, how do I offer my gifts to the world? And you know, if we think about a coaching business, it might be, okay, is it three months or six months? Do I have in-person sessions or Zoom sessions? Do I want to be group or individual, in person or, or remote? Um, how do I really want to offer this? And then price it. And there's often this conversation that goes on about pricing according to what I think it's worth, what others are charging, um, you know, valuing my time rather than the transformation. So, oh my gosh, if I want to charge that, I need to add more sessions and then more sessions feels heavy or I need to, you know, whatever. I know I remember um, one time when I raised the investment to work with me and I found myself like doing, doing my, all of my clients work <laughs> because it just felt like, well, if they're going to pay me that much, I probably should write their sales page for them and all of these things. And then it became heavy. Does any, has anybody felt that like stress around um, developing your offerings in a way that really works, the pricing and the, okay. Okay, so we're gonna introduce a concept today that will hopefully help with that and help you to get more bold around centering your business around what we call your sourced magic. So your homework for tonight, your um, our action step for day one is relatively easy. We want you to take the quiz and we want you to speak about what resonates for you in um, the Facebook group. So raise your hand if you've taken the Source Magic quiz. Beautiful. Okay, so if you remember what your magic is, go ahead and put that in the chat. Expansion, vibration, expansion, sensation. We usually get a really good mix. Oh, I see quite a few vibration, compassion and expression, two different results. Yeah, so a lot of people are multi-magical 
And we're going to put a video into the Facebook group today um, where we interview people with the different types of magic. So you can watch that for extra credit if you want to, um, to get a sense of how they actually operate and show up. Um, most people have more than one. I resonate with three of the six most deeply. Um, so your sourced magic is how source, spirit, God, the universe, collective energy, however you prefer to think about it. Um, you know, for us, it's not religious. It's definitely about the energy, um, the energy of spirit. Um, how source wants to work with and through you to create transformation on the planet. So we believe source wants to see our planet transform, right? We are all, and we are all a part of that. Um, when we are able to hear our inner knowing, when we're able to hear our inner knowing, we actually know the clients that are right for us, the marketing that's right for us, and the business model that's right for us. The issue is that mostly we haven't learned to hear and trust it. I had this knowing when I started my business and then I sort of forgot about it. And I wanna share a little story. It was, um, I was working in a corporate job. I had acquired some debt from my previous marriage and divorce. And I knew I wanted to start a business. I'd been trained as a coach and I felt really strongly that this work needed to be out in the world. I spent a lot of time looking for a job I could take that would let me do this work. And then I realized I just need to create it for myself. <clears throat> and so I had this desire, but I felt like I couldn't leave a job and go start a business um, with this debt. And so I felt really, really stuck. Um, I had a friend who introduced me to someone and I had coffee with her and she was a spiritual um, person and an author um, and a relationship expert. And my friend had connected me with her because of, you know, I had been going through my divorce and I, I don't remember anything we talked about, but I remember I, what I believe is that she helped connect me to the energy of source. Now, I feel like you probably do that with your clients. Most people here, you're doing that, whether you're conscious of it or not. The, the vibration or the energy you are bringing is opening them up to something. So I'm driving home from this meeting and I'm you know, driving my car down the highway in Cincinnati and I'm thinking about my debt because you know she was an author and do, doing this work and I was, thinking I need to get out of this debt so I can do my business. So thinking about my debt, as I had a hundred times before, I had already quit going out to nice dinners or ordering Starbucks and, you know, working on chunking it away, which was slow. And I'm driving down the road and all of a sudden my car swerves on the highway out of nowhere, like noticeable, like, Phew. and I thought, what, what was that? And so I was kind of freaked out, everything was fine. Um, but I thought, what is this about? And I started to look back at what had I been thinking about when this happened? Well, when this happened, I had specifically been thinking about cashing out my retirement account to pay my debt, right? So I had this whole list of like possibilities of ways to pay my debt. And I would go through the list in my mind. And I'd been thinking about cashing out my retirement account when the car swerved. And I had a whole conversation about cashing out my retirement because that's not a smart thing to do. Um, you're going to pay penalties on that withdrawal. You're going to end up with less money. No, no smart person would do this, right? And that was why I hadn't done it yet. And so I thought, is this a message? Is this a message? I didn't have the word source at the time, but I was like, is this a, a sign that I should do that? And I had to go through a whole lot of um, overthinking <laughs> about how dumb it would be to make that decision before I decided to actually follow and honor 
what I knew. I knew it was telling me something and it seemed crazy and I didn't, couldn't explain it to anyone and it wouldn't make sense to anyone else, but I knew. So after a couple of weeks of deliberating, I cashed out my retirement account. Um, what I had two, so I cashed out one of them. It was $35,000 from my teaching career. And I paid my debt, which was 25, I think. So it worked, worked to pay it off. Within the week of making that decision, I got a call from a friend about a job offer. Um, within two weeks, I had a new job making 35,000 more than my old job. And within six months, I had been offered a severance package from that job. And what's crazy is um, it was back at my former company. So they gave me a severance package for the entire time I had worked for the company. So it was over six figures that I earned in six months by making that decision. I am 100% clear that was God. And that there would have been no possible way for me to logically figure out how to do that. I, had, I would have never, never in a million years thought of that plan. Now, you would think I would have been shouting from the rooftops about this, right? But I was actually kind of embarrassed. I was like, this is crazy that this happened. And so I kind of stuffed it. Now, I'm going to speak really briefly to energy. The victory was not about clearing the debt, although that was part of it, um, to not have that you know, reminder of the past. But the victory was that I decided that being smart was no longer my measure for life. And I decided that trusting my knowing was more important than looking smart, which I could tell a whole story about how I decided being smart was a good idea. It was the energetic breakthrough that opened up the space for that to come in. That I put my own happiness and joy over looking smart and doing what other people thought was the right thing. Fast forward, getting into business, right? I, lots of people were really eager to tell me what to do and how to do it best and all of that. Anybody gotten a lot of that? I cringe every time I think of any time in the past I told someone what was a good idea because they know, you know, we know, your client knows, your client is sourced too. But I would get into doing things because I thought I had to do them as opposed to going back to this place of this inner knowing, this inner truth. It led me to hosting an event, and I talk about this on my website, I, I've talked about this a lot of times, hosting an event where I lost $50,000, and that get, got my attention. Um, and I realized that I had made a lot of decisions from ego uh, leading up to that event, including the, the idea that I had to do an event like this in order to be anyone, right? Meanwhile, everything else in my business was running along smoothly, but I added the thing that made it hard and heavy. And this is, this is what we do, right? We don't listen to our knowing. My knowing had created a beautiful business that was running with systems and um, amazingly, and then I added the thing that made it heavy again. And I heard myself say, if it weren't for this event, my life would be so easy right now. And I got really committed to life being easy. And that's what's brought us here. My own commitment to listening to source. And then this concept of the source magics actually came through. So one of the magics is expression. Expression is like a channeling, right? Um, it came through. And so I'm here to share this with you this week. Ashley and I are gonna walk you through kind of some different ways to look at your sourced magic or how your inner knowing is working. And are you trusting it? Or are you like me going, oh, this, this isn't really something to be talked about. So let's kind of hide it and we'll listen when it's convenient. Or if it screams, right? Sometimes, you know, that idea that the universe throws you a cotton ball and then a brick, like sometimes it screams, but the more we can listen to the cotton balls, the less we need the bricks. And the more we understand this, the easier it is to work with the bricks as well. 
<laughs> right? We just catch on. Okay, so, oh, one of the things we're doing today, since it's the first day and we want to get us in the habit of um, posting in the Facebook group, we are giving away a t-shirt today. Um, we have t-shirt, I'm supposed to hold it up, but that say, I am sourced. And they say a few things on it. So I'm going to talk about this quickly. Um, so our request is that you take the quiz and that you sh make a share in the Facebook group about how your magic um, speaks to you. How are you resonating with this? What? And you might have a story. It might be like, here's how I hear it with my clients. By the way, we hear it so much easier with our clients, for our clients, than for ourselves. Has anybody noticed that? When you're with your client, you can kind of see, you can see the patterns or you can feel the energy. And then in your, when it comes to your own business, it might be easier to ignore. So on our t-shirts, it says four things. It says be magical, be receptive, be potent, and be light. And we're going to talk about these things as, as core as we go through this week. Specifically, be magical. This is, this is around owning your magic. This is what we're doing this week. Be receptive. Ashley's going to talk about this in a moment. Be potent. I want to bring our attention to. Um, we will talk a lot more about this tomorrow. When you are in your knowing, Right? You're, when you're in your knowing, there's no doubt, there's no distraction, there's no other energies trying to grab your attention. And you show up potently. And when you show up potently, the results happen so much faster. So what may have taken you 12 sessions with a client to get to might now take you one session or a button, three sessions, like don't, don't get attached to any of those numbers because this is all personal to you, but like there's less doing and there's more energetic transmission and the clients just know. It's amazing. I see some nodding. Some of you have experienced this. Um, and then lastly, be light, right? With all the heaviness in the world, if we get in the heavy bus, like it's not going to serve anybody. And so the more we can lean into this knowing of this sourced connection, the less the day-to-day -day activities make us feel heavy because we know our truth. And that doesn't mean being afraid to go into the shadows, but it means on it, from a, how you live life, you're not holding the weight. Um, Ashley, I wanted people to get to know you today and <laughs> to, to talk a little bit about receptivity. <laughs> As we wrap, I see As you. We <laughs> As we wrap, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So being receptive is a capacity to be with whatever arises. Knowing yourself as someone who can be with what arises without flinching or shrinking or guarding or defending or any of that default stuff. And when we have a capacity to receive whatever is arising, we are powerful, potent, magical, light, like all of the things, right? So this is really knowing yourself as that. You want me to share a story, Darla? I'm, I'm cognizant of the time, right? Um, here's, what, here's what I'll say about that. This is like, um, when you're not being receptive, you'll notice it as the places where you're avoiding a conversation. It's the thing you won't say. It's the place you won't go with your client. You think, I see this a lot in sales. I've done it myself in a, like a sales call or an, a discovery call where you're exploring if somebody might want to work with you. It's the place where you go, oh yeah, I have this and I do that. And then you say, I'll send you the information, right? Because you, you don't want to go into really offering the thing for fear of what they might say, for fear of rejection, or maybe it's the place in your work with them where you can sense like something else is underneath the surface 
and you won't quite ask the question that would get to the heart of it because you're not sure that you can be with what is going to open up in the space between you. So really being receptive is a key component of being a source leader. Beautiful. hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. And then we don't ask, we don't ask for the feedback. We don't ask for the sale. We don't show up fully for fear that someone might respond some type of way. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, we have, we have people in our programs who are, you know, have multi-million dollar businesses, have been in business for a long time. And there's always this edge of receptivity. I know it's something I continue to work with um, because we're, we're sensitive, delicate beings as light workers in a lot of ways, right? And so we've all, we have all these strategies to hide that, but at the core, it's really, that's really accurate, I would think for most people here. So building our muscle of receptivity is so important for us to be potent out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. We'll hear more from Ashley this week as well. Um, so that is class one. I want you to consider how you're going to start getting these knowings, by the way, they're just going to come in. Um, how being connected to your potent inner knowing might start to resolve those heaviness issues that you wrote down earlier. Okay. And we're going to unpack that this week and your knowing will guide. Thank you. Thank you for who you are in the world. Thank you for choosing to spend your time here. And I look forward to learning about your magic in the Facebook group in the next day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.